This is a video for how to make a quick front end assembly, save that assembly as a zip folder, share it with someone, and then take a zip folder shared with you and put it into your project folder. So one thing we want to look at is let's take a look at an actual, you know, Automoblox car front end. Um, you'll notice that the part is totally constrained um, right here at the top. You can see where it's flush on the edges. So one of the things if you actually get these parts to share with your students is they can actually see what a mate and flush constraint looks like and feels like by holding on the actual object. One of the things you'll note is that the axles are part of our wheel subassembly. These will not come out of the front end. So we're actually going to use those as the wheel subassembly for what we're going to do. So I'm going to start a new assembly. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to come down to assembly and I'm going to go to place. And one of the things I want to take a look at is I'm in my Automoblox car here. So I'm going to come down and find my uh, front end, my T9 front, and I'm going to go to open and I'm going to left click to place and right click and say OK. And I want to rotate this around until it's something, until it has the, the view that I want to call the front end. So I'm going to right click and I call this the front. So I'm going to go to set current view as front, top left hand corner. I'm going to right click and go to set current view as home and go to fit to view. Now when I click on my house button, it'll fit to view there. So I'm going to go to place. And the other thing we saw was a two block socket. So I'm going to scroll down until I see T9, two block socket, and I'm going to say open. And I'm going to left click to place, right click, and say OK. Now our front end right here should be grounded. Since we're mating this to the front end, I'm going to right click on the front end to go down to grounded. And I'm going to tap on the green two block socket and go to free rotate, and I'm going to rotate this around. And one thing we want to do is we want our surface right here to be flush to this surface. Constrain, blush. This surface will be flush to this surface and we're going to say apply. Now we're going to work on mate, mating some edges. So I'm going to go to mate and I'm going to mate this edge to this edge and say apply. Now since we've grounded the front end, notice that this has one degree of freedom along an axis. So now I just want to mate two more edges. So I'm going to go to constrain, mate this edge to this edge and say apply. And you'll notice now if I come up to my free rotate, this object is totally constrained. So I'm going to come up here and go to save and I'm going to call this o OCT front end and hit save. And it's going to ask me, do you want to save the assembly and its dependence? What that means is, do you want to save this assembly and the parts it is dependent on? You can't have an assembly without parts. I'm going to say OK and that's going to go ahead and save. So now that we have this saved, I'm going to have you go ahead and just get out of the assembly. So we're going to do a little X by our view cube. And now what I want you to do is go and open up Windows Explorer on your computer. Now in order for me to find my project folder I have to come up here to projects and I need to make sure that I know this path. So I know this path like the like the back of my hand because I've done it a hundred times but it's probably going to be somewhere along what I have here. So you need to make sure you know this. You might want to write it down. Let's go back to Windows Explorer and I'm going to go to C and I'm going to scroll down and go to Users, McAllister, and I'm going to go to My Documents and I'm going to go to Inventor and I'm going to go down to my Automoblox car folder. And you'll notice in my Automoblox car folder, if I scroll down, I can see my OCT front end assembly file. These are assembly files. These are parts. You can see I got some images in here. You can see I have some drawing files. Now I'm going to hold down on the control key. I tapped once on my OCT front end, and I'm going to scroll down until I see T9 front, and I see T9 two block socket. Once I have those three objects selected, I can let off of control right click on top of one of those objects and go to send to and go to compressed zip folder and you're going to see this right here and I'm going to call this OCT front end and hit enter. I now have this uh, compressed zip folder. Click and hold down and drag this onto your desktop. Now you'll notice that if I go to just my desktop I have this OCT front end compressed zip folder. If I double click on it, you can see where inside the object is my assembly, my T9 front, and my two block socket. So what you can do with this now is you can email this to somebody, you can put this in a Google Drive shared folder, and then they can then download the parts that you've put together and put that into their larger assembly. So that's the way you're going to go about sharing those with someone else. So once these objects are now shared with you, you might be asking, how am I going to go about putting these in my project folder? And that's what we're going to do next. So let's say that this front end has been shared with me from somebody else. I'm going to double click on the zip folder, and I'm going to highlight everything including the assembly and the parts. Some people just want to send somebody an assembly file. You can't do that. You have to have the parts with the assembly. I've highlighted all three. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to copy. Once I've done that, I'm going to go back to my C folder and again 
back to my project path. Users, McAllister Mark, My Documents, Inventor, Automoblocks car. Now I've created this brand new folder up here of what I'm going to do. I've, I took my wheel sub assembly and I'm going to do my full assembly in there. So I'm going to double click on wheel sub assembly and there's my axle, my tire, my wheel, and my wheel sub assembly. I'm just going to right click and go down to paste. And now I have my OCT front end, my front, and my two block socket. I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to get on my project folder here in Inventor and I'm going to go to a brand new assembly. And the first thing I'm going to place Go to my wheel sub assembly folder is my OCT front end and I'm going to go to open and I'm going to left click to place, right click, say OK. And again, however you choose uh, to put your object together, but I like to call this my front end. I'm going to right click, set current view as and go to front. Top left hand corner, right click, set current view as home, fit to view. I have a nice view right here. Now I want to ground this component because I'm going to be putting these wheels on the object and I don't want this to move. So we're going to right click and we're going to go down to grounded. And let's go ahead and go to place. And now I'm going to place my wheel sub assembly and go to open. Left click, left click, and right click and say OK. I'm going to tap on this wheel and come up to free rotate. And I'm going to rotate this around. And I'm going to right click and say OK. Now when I go to constrain, I'm going to come in here until I see my center line. Click on the center line. I'm going to rotate around. And I'm going to click on this center line and line them up and say apply. Once I get out of this, you'll notice now this has two degrees of freedom and go along or around an axis. What we need now is to constrain this surface right here to the back of this surface right here. Say apply. Now when I get out of this, you'll notice that now this will spin around that front end. Now you can use the insert constraint. If you go to constraint, the insert constraint can get this done really in just two clicks. I'm personally a big fan of lining things up. You can do this multiple ways if you choose to. There's something up here called joints that are really cool to go in and learn. But when I'm teaching just basic constraints, I like to use center line to center line because it really, it really reinforces how you would actually put these objects on the part. You are actually lining these up and then you're popping them into place if you're really going to put them on. I think it reinforces what mating and flushing is. So we're going to go this surface to this surface, say apply, and now I have that front end done. So if somebody sends me, you know, if somebody sends me their, you know, passenger section assembly. Now all I have to do is just copy and paste all those files into that project folder, place that larger assembly, and you put the whole assembly onto the car in like three or four clicks and it's going to work really well. So I can just come up here and go to save and I'll call this, I'm in that wheel sub assembly folder, I'm going to call this, you know, full car assembly. And this has, all this is, when I go full car assembly and say, okay, this is just nothing more than two sub assemblies. I put one of the sub assemblies on here twice, and then you can start putting the full car together. You give each group a project, they work on that project, they share it, and it goes into the larger hole for everybody. So this has been a video on how to save parts and share them with each other and then put them into your larger projects and then even constrain those sub assemblies. So it's a, a really neat, efficient way to go about putting together full assemblies.